stretch of Lenten season. We still have our prayer calls and we'll always have our prayer calls at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Please dial in. We still have our Sunday worship service at 9.30. Tune in on YouTube and Facebook Live. We have our daily manna lessons airing every day at noon on YouTube and Facebook Live. And we also have daily devotionals. We are encouraging during Lenten season to fast and grow in your relationship with God. But of course, we want you to do that for the entire year and years to come. So definitely tune in to these multiple opportunities we have. It has been a blessing during the month of March as we celebrated the women of St. Mark, women of Orlando, women of Florida, of the U.S. and the world, and the ladies of the Women's Conference Committee greatly appreciate all of you who have participated in the conference this month. Today, we look forward to hearing from Patricia Russell McLeod. So ladies and gentlemen, please tune in for this wonderful experience. We are moving into Holy Week and we want to commence the week on Friday. That's Good Friday, this upcoming Friday at 12 noon with a viewing of Seven Last Sayings. It's always been a blessing every year. At 12 noon, we encourage you to dial in, not literally, but figuratively dial in on YouTube and Facebook Live to experience a blessing from seven ministers delivering seven different messages. It will be wonderful and we know that you will be blessed as we have in the past. And of course, Resurrection Sunday is next Sunday. It's also first Sunday. So immediately following our 930 service, we expect to see you in the parking lot at 1 p.m. for parking lot praise. On Resurrection Sunday, the main campus will be airing at 930 a.m. and the East Campus will be airing on Zoom at 10 a.m. Multiple opportunities to be grateful for he has risen. So see us at 930 and 10 a.m.
ladies of St. Mark, I just want to say thank you. And I particularly want to say thank you to our Women's Day Steering Committee, who gave me this exquisite base for sharing in the leadership this month. When I think about leadership and when I think about what we've done, I go to the words of our former president, Barack Obama, who has inscribed on his presidential memorial these words. America is not the project of any one person because the single most powerful word in our democracy is the word we, we the people. We shall overcome, yes, we can. That word was owned by no one. It belongs to everyone. Oh, what a glorious task we are given to continually try to improve this great nation of ours. In St. Mark, ladies, we are improving this great nation through our church, one person at a time. I would be remiss if I didn't call off the names of our steering committee, Dolores Alexander, Natalie Bell, Latanya Janetta, Kim Hill, Cassie Peak, Shirlene Smart, Cecilia Beckford, Harriet Brown Burke, Shaquilla Henderson, Carolyn Limke, Gail Ridgway, and Cindy Washington. These women have done whatever you ask. They've gone extraordinarily beyond, above what you could ask, just making sure that this month was successful. Thank you, ladies. God. I'd also like to acknowledge our technology team, Sharon Butler, Shaquilla Henderson, Ashley James, Cheryl Keeley, Sheena Washington. Our church administrative support, Sharon Butler, Shirley Smart, and Reverend Beeson, who provided our Zoom for us, and our music ministry, Reverend Priscilla Robinson, our praise team, and our graphic designer, Debbie Johnson. Presiding Elder Robinson, Dr. Barty, thank you for your amazing ability to host and to transition between all these generations. And finally, thank you, Pastor Gray, for your belief and your support and your love for the women of St. Mark. Ladies, we are unified. We must remain unified. You can't do anything by yourself. But together, we can move mountains. And we've seen what could happen during this month. In spite of a pandemic, we came together as almost no one could do, as no one could expect to do. And we just bless God today for his grace and his mercy and his anointing. God bless you. God bless you. stretch of Lenten season. We still have our prayer calls and we'll always have our prayer calls at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Please dial in. We still have our Sunday worship service at 930. Tune in on YouTube and Facebook Live. We have our daily manna lessons airing every day at noon on YouTube and Facebook Live. And we also have daily devotionals. We are encouraging during Lenten season to fast and grow in your relationship with God. But of course, we want you to do that for the entire year and years to come. So definitely tune in to these multiple opportunities we have. It has been a blessing during the month of March as we celebrated the women of St. Mark, women of Orlando, women of Florida, of the US and the world, and the ladies of the Women's Conference Committee greatly appreciate all of you who have participated in the conference this month. Today we look forward to hearing from Patricia Russell McLeod. So ladies and gentlemen, please tune in for this wonderful experience.
We are moving into Holy Week and we want to commence the week on Friday. That's Good Friday, this upcoming Friday at 12 noon with a viewing of Seven Last Sayings. It's always been a blessing every year. At 12 noon, we encourage you to dial in, not literally, but figuratively, dial in on YouTube and Facebook Live to experience a blessing from seven ministers delivering seven different messages. It will be wonderful and we know that you will be blessed as we have in the past. And of course, Resurrection Sunday is next Sunday. It's also first Sunday. So immediately following our 930 service, we expect to see you in the parking lot at 1 p.m. for parking lot praise. On Resurrection Sunday, the main campus will be airing at 930 a.m. and the East Campus will be airing on Zoom at 10 a.m. Multiple opportunities to be grateful for he has risen. So see us at 9.30 and 10 a.m. Praise God and welcome to Sunday morning. I am overwhelmingly excited that we're coming together by faith on this Palm Sunday. It's also the last Sunday in the month of March and you will know we designate that time to be an opportunity for our women to have an opportunity to be featured. You know, March is Women's History Month and we celebrate the women that God has allowed to be impactful and instrumental in our lives. And so we are blessed on this wonderful day to have Women's Conference culmination as well. And I'm honored on this Sunday morning to be blessed to share with me in our introductions Presiding Elder Mary Robinson, who happens to be in charge of our women's ministry here at St. Mark, as well as Dr. Ethel Trewick, who happens to be in charge of our women's conference during this time. And I welcome you. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, sir. And if you all don't mind, share with us your thoughts in regard to the conference. How has it been? Generation to generation, woman to woman, it's amazing to me that this last Sunday, which is Palm Sunday, is our day. As daughters of God, we are grateful to celebrate today as Women's Day. Welcome all women, as well as our brothers. God bless you and God keep you. Amen, presiding elder and pastor. I'm just overjoyed with this month of celebration we have had. It has been a blessing. And this morning my husband said, baby, this is an anointed women's month. That's what we feel. We've been anointed and appointed to do God's work. And we're just excited today that we uh, come together and celebrate as women of God leading the way. I believe by faith you're going to be blessed by worship. I want you to go ahead and get your Bibles, get your attitudes ready to worship because we want to enter into his gates of thanksgiving and his course of praise. You're going to be blessed by a phenomenal array of gifted sisters who are going to lead us in our liturgy. And I know you're going to be blessed by the word of God that's going to come forth by Dr. Patricia Russell McLeod. So guess what? Let's go into the sanctuary because it is Sunday morning. Because he's been good. Come on and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, Lord. Lord, I love you. For your goodness and your mercy, Lord. name once more and again we gather as your called out and set apart people that we may enter your gates with thanksgiving that we may enter your courts with praise we are thankful unto you and we are excited to bless your name here we are on the very last Sunday in the month of March and officially if we look back over last year it was the first Sunday that we recognized we were not gathering in any form 
in the sanctuary. And yet, Lord, you blessed us from that moment unto now. You've kept your word, and I want to thank you for what you said before the doors were closed for us to gather in worship. You promised that we would be sustained. You told us to have no fear, and you declared we were going to survive. And so I want to stand here just a year later just to say thank you because we've come this far by faith. I didn't have anybody else's word to rely on, but I want to thank you that I've been able to rely on the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us in our down setting and our uprising. Thank you, Lord. We've had some hurts along the journey, but you brought us. We've had death along the way, but you brought us. Our resources at times got a little tight, but you brought us. We've had stress from all forms around us, but you brought us. And this Sunday morning, we want to tell you thank you because we didn't come this far on our own. And on this wonderful Sunday morning, we want to thank you for the women in our lives. Those women that have sacrificed, that have labored over the years. And during this month that we honor them from a historical perspective, from generation to generation, we want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord, for every mother, every grandmother. Thank you for every great-grandmama. Thank you for every sister. And thank you for every wife. And thank you for every friend. I want to thank you right now for the women being in our lives, for helping us to become who we are right now. And lest we forget to tell you thank you, I want to tell you thank you one more time because I thank you for how we're going to be able to worship this evening. Thank you for how you're going to move by your spirit, saturate the atmosphere with your anointing, heal, deliver, and set free. Let somebody on the other side of the screen experience the freshness of the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on in this house. Spirit of the living God, move in this house. Open up the door, open up the way. Let the atmosphere be set for the Holy Ghost to have his way. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank God. If you believe it's going to be done, come on and shout, thank God. Say it again, thank God. And amen. Put them glad hands together and let's worship our God. Let's make way for our praise team as they come.
God from the Message Bible Interpretation. Colossians chapter 4 verses 1 through 6. And masters, treat your servants considerately. Be fair with them. Don't forget for a minute that you too serve a master, God in heaven. Pray diligently. Stay alert with your eyes wide open in gratitude. Don't forget to pray for us, that God will open doors for telling the mystery of Christ even while I'm locked up in this jail. Pray that every time I open my mouth, I'll be able to make Christ plain as day to them. Use your heads as you live and work among outsiders. Don't miss a trick. Make the most of every opportunity. Be gracious in your speech. The goal is to bring out the best in others in a conversation, not to put them down, and not to cut them out. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 2 through 6. Reverently honor an older woman as you would your mother, and the younger women as sisters. Take care of the widows who are destitute, if a widow has family members to take care of her, let them learn that religion begins at their own doorstep and that they should pay back with gratitude some of what they have received. This pleases God immensely. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God.
our speaker for this Women's History Emphasis event have served all mankind in numerous ways. Her work has influenced many, including, but not limited to, the American Association of Retired Persons, some of you call it ARP, the National Association of Women's Business Owners, Women's Food Service Forum, eWomen's Network, McDonald's, Northrop Grumman, Procter and Gamble, the United States Postal Service, and many, many more. She is an alumnus of the Kentucky State University, Harvard University, Howard University, where she earned her Juris Doctorate degree from the School of Law in Washington, D.C. Notably, she is a 2017 inductee of the historically black colleges and universities HBCU Hall of Fame Lifetime Achievement Award. Professionally, she has served as an attorney for the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC in Washington, D.C. She has been awarded numerous recognitions, awards, honors, including being presented 300 keys to American cities. And particularly, she has been named as one of the top five motivators in the country by Black Enterprise Magazine, identified as one of the top 10 speakers in America, success run on in our race, featured in Essence Magazine and in Ebony Magazine as one of the most influential women in the United States. Presently, she is a business entrepreneur, an author, a global professional speaker, orator, as well as she is operating in her gift more than 30 years of experience on the speaker lecture circuit. She is categorized as a speaker's speaker. Her speaking style is engaging, highly substantive, well-researched, relevant to her audiences, and entertaining, whether for public or the private sector. She is a visual speaker who is, in a word, unforgettable. Family and friends, to usher us into this culminating celebration of woman-to-woman -woman conversations across generations in mind, body, and spirit, please, with your best applause, help me welcome to this virtual lecture my beloved Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority sister and Lynx sister, the 11th National President of the Lynx Incorporated, the wife of Bishop E. Earl McLeod Jr., the 127th elected and consecrated Bishop of the AME Church, our Episcopal Supervisor, Patricia, Patricia Russell McLeod.
St. Mark African Methodist Episcopal Church, Orlando. Our faith is inextricably bound and tied to who and how we are. A praying Christian woman, mother of the church, mom, grandmom, or big mom, Sunday school worship, midweek, or Bible school, we depend on our faith and God's favor for relief, release, renewal, restoration, and redemption. Christian women, educators who teach to touch a life and not just to make a living, tacticians and technicians, scientists and researchers in health allied fields, physicians, pharmacists, nurses, executives and administrators, chiefs of staff, artists, orators, marketing agents, public relations experts, journalists, writers, athletes, and entertainers, bankers, financiers, business women, because uh, they know that there's no business like your own business, and that is the bottom line. Comedian Phyllis Diller reminded us, we are women who understand that housework will not kill you, but why take the chance? Many are broken in spirit, burdened, battered, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, feeling helpless and hopeless. They want to trade in their pain for his promise and trade today's challenge for tomorrow's second chance. Christian women, what manner of women are these? There will be days when we will be disappointed, disapproved, disengaged, disconnected, disgruntled, dispirited, and discounted, and sometimes just dissed. Christianity is an action-driven adventure of faith. We are those who serve better together. Christianity is not a spectator sport. We are doing the will of God, each of us, all of us. Faith sees the invisible, hears the inaudible, touches the intangible, and does the impossible. Woman to woman, across generations, mind, body, and spirit. Good morning. To the community of faith and to the erudite pastor, preacher, teacher, God-led shepherd of the historic St. Mark African Methodist Episcopal Church, Orlando, the Reverend Dr. Terrence R. Gray. Dr. Ethel Wellington Trawick, dedicated and effervescent chair of the Women's Conference 2021. To Ms. Felicia Y. Davis, the intentional president of the Women's Missionary Society and all women who have worked diligently attending the informative sessions of Woman to woman across generations, mind, body, and spirit on Friday nights in preparation for this morning's culminating worship. To the presiding elders, stewards, and trustees, to the associate pastors and pulpit associates, congregational members, to friends, visitors, supporters, and virtual attendees, to my sister links and uh, those dedicated to betterment for humankind, to my Soras of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, aligned with friendship and service. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to be invited to share my thoughts with you, St. Mark, for the culminating of our 2021 Women's Conference. I'm awed and humbled, proud and pleased to bring you greetings from the 127th elected and consecrated Bishop, E. Earl McLeod, Jr., 
presiding in West Africa and South Africa, the 14th Episcopal and the 19th Episcopal districts, respectively, and my partner in marriage, mission, and ministry. Woman to woman, across generations, in mind, body, and spirit. St. Mark, savvy companies are making diversity, equity, and inclusion in the workplace a priority, a necessity, a mandate with desired and deserved outcomes for individuals to be able to maximize their potential and churches have the same challenge. Christian believers, notwithstanding their age or stage, achievements or failures, ups or downs, whether popular or overlooked, whether ideologically aligned or philosophically divided, everybody, and that's everybody, has a seat at God's table. Without a glance, without analysis, without exception or amendment or a query or question. God's invitation is a y'all come. It's open to everybody because let us be clear, but for the grace of God go we. Now St. Mark, our topic, Christian women show some signs. Christian women show some sign because you're the one that we've been waiting for. Be authentic, be in touch with who you are, know where you're going. It is true if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. And growing up in Indianapolis, Indiana, we played a child's game and one child would run forward and say, I dare you. And then the next child would come behind them and say, I don't dare you. And finally, we will then look at God's appreciation for who we are as Christian women. And in Atlanta, Georgia, where I live, I found that they don't often give the greeting, the appreciation, the recognition of thank you. Instead, they say, appreciate you, appreciate you. For ours is to capture the special richness, the vast array of talents and skills and abilities and expertise, woman to woman, across generations in mind, body, and spirit. You're the one that we've been waiting for because California's Rodney King's inquiry was, can we all get along? We focus on our scriptures, Colossians 4 and 6, NIV. So let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You see, salt changes the flavor, whatever it adds to that zest and the zing, the taste of the seasoning. And as believers, ours is to preserve the good news of the messenger and the message, to reach and teach others. And both our words and our example ought to add to the conversation. Christian women need to show some sign of their attitude and their belief in the journey and their commitment. It should be one of inclusion and encouragement. It should be gracious and inviting and without judgment. Notwithstanding our different flavors, the way we talk and walk and act, and behave and interact and live, Christian women should show some sign. Know this, you're the one that we've been waiting for. Know that a judgmental attitude kills the spirit of Christ. Any negative or critical, accusatory, argumentative spirit sinks to hinder and not help. 
It seeks to dissuade and not to empower, to classify and categorize and not to include. And it serves as a deterrent, as a blocker, stopper, a red light to God's message and movement in somebody's life. Be careful, good, correct, and holy Christians, because you don't want to do that which causes somebody to lose their soul. You don't want to argue with a person who is on their way to the cross. You don't want to be so heavenly bound that you are no earthly good. You don't want to be so highbrow that you lose touch and therefore lose a soul. So. Don't be so busy getting ready to be ready that at the end of life, you'll be all dressed up with no place to go. As a witness to who Jesus is, excitement abounds because our testimony ignites and excites because we're telling our story to somebody else. It's our own reality check that I don't look like what I've been through. And we're reminded that, but for the grace of God, go we. Tell your story. Give a witness to who it is you say you are without altering your beliefs or framing your commentary to make it palatable or relatable or politically correct. It's your story. Tell your story and have biblical accuracy and alignment. I dare you. I don't dare you. You need a plan. And that, that plan means that you have a methodology, a strategy, an approach, a roadmap, a compass. Be reminded when you fail the plan, you can plan to fail. Honorable Stacey Abrams, Georgia's great example, demonstrated that the naysayers were on her back. And she decided rather than throw in the towel, they thought they'd have a wolf pack come after her. And what did she do? She led the pack. Fair fight, registered Georgians to vote. And now Georgia is what? blue. Georgia is not red. It's not purple, but blue. Look at God. Have a plan and then work your plan. United States House impeachment manager, Honorable Val Demings, knocked the ball so far out of the park. We may never see that ball again. Pray much. Be persistent and perceptive and praiseful in prayer because yours is to spread the good news, to tell your story, to tell somebody about a life changing, a life sustaining with a benefit package of eternal life. Ours is to tell everybody about this somebody who is not transactional, but transformational. He is the Christ Jesus. He is not a one hit wonder. He is not connected to an on and off switch. He is a constant friend and a guide and a guard. He is alert available, amazing, and almighty. He is an awesome Jesus. He is present when the role is called. And even when you don't see him, he's there. Because before there was a was, he was. And now that which is now, he still is. And when this is no more, he still will be. He is omnipotent, all powerful, present and accounted for. He can pick you up and dust you off. He is able to give you a relationship that will put your mind at ease, 
fill you with joy and thanksgiving and satisfy your soul. And surely you will declare as did the songwriter. I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. God uses us to spiritually impact family and friends, neighbors and generations. He uses us to impact the young and the seasoned, those who know it all and those who don't know it at all. Christian women, show some sign. You are not only to lecture by example, you are to set an example. I'm reminded of the woman who was stressed trying to get to work. It was critical. She had a very important work meeting and the truck driver in front of her as she was driving was not in a hurry. At the red light, she was pounding on her horn and leaned out the window, screaming at the truck driver. And she ran it and raved so much that a policeman walked up to her car and said, ma'am, pull over, please. Could I see your license and insurance? He checked her out. And in a few moments, he explained, you know what? I made a wrong assumption. You were sending mixed signals. He knew with all the honking and hollering, all the cussing and fussing, uh, but your license plate, the holder has, uh, what would Jesus do? And then on your bumper sticker, it says, I love my church. The policeman said, I was convinced that it was a stolen car because your conduct did not match your signage. Don't talk about it, be about it. St. Mark, if you're a Christian, you ought to show some sign. You don't want to be on the hypocrisy radar. Your life and the way you live it may be the only chapter of the Bible that somebody else will ever read. Now look at 1 Timothy 5 and 2. Older women as mothers and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. We want you to focus on what Aretha Franklin was singing in her song, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. Leaders without followers may not be good leaders because leadership is not personality, it's performance. Leadership is not effort, it's results. And leaders understand that good intentions will never suffice when a backbone is required. And if perchance you think you're leading and you look back and nobody's following, perhaps you're just out for a walk the towering and the tiny, the seasoned and the young, the lawyer, doctor, and the home engineer, the person who can't live without the cell phone and the person who doesn't find any value in even having a cell phone, the rich and the famous and those who need a hand up to get turned back around, the gray-haired and the grateful and the drop it like it's hot. Agents of division among women in our churches, age and marital status and the nursery and infants and toddlers, the in-betweens, the teens, the college bound, the singles ministry, the young adults and the missionary society, the seasoned and the significant are marginalized. And for we wanna know whether and to what extent you are those who uh, are championing older, wiser, the wisdom that comes with lived experiences. Is it the expectation that only the 30 and unders will understand technology and be proficient? Programmatically, you have the who and the how on lock if you're 40 and older. The input and impact is neither expected nor accepted. Yes, I said that. Women are affected by the division. 
first time parent, working professional with children, a single parent married with a husband or a house husband, designated driver, mom is taking the children off to swimming class and basketball, volleyball and soccer moms, debate teams. Women are seeking spiritual enlightenment the position and placement to be guided and guarded and without apology or hesitancy, enlightenment, because the word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. It is upon us individually to reach out and to build a bridge and a relationship, woman to woman, in church and church work across generations. Prayer changes things and prayer will change you. Doctrine won't be enough. Prayer won't be enough by itself because you understand that the base of who we are is based in love. Love is not what makes the world go round. Love is what makes the ride worthwhile. The church is a Christian family that grows together. Notwithstanding your generation, everybody is going through something. Whatever you started from, wherever you started in your beginning, there are common experiences and occurrences and frustrations the silent generation in American generations, the baby boomers in generation X, the millennials born in 1981, and then the baby boomers in generation X and generation Z. In the 20th century, women have made quantum advances educationally and professionally making real inroads into non-traditional fields exponentially while others are marching in place. It is true what Secretary of State then Madeleine Albright told us. There's a special place in hell when women do not help each other. St. Mark, Wherever you find yourself, anointed or appointed, when you reach the 138th floor, don't be an amnesia victim. Send the elevator back down. Women are making a mark. Whether in the faith community, we have four women bishops in life and legacy of the AME church. What politics? Show me. Honorable Shirley Chisholm, who told us that she was unbought and unbossed. And I will show you Kamala Davy Harris, the Vice President of the United States of America. Politically, you show me Mamie Eisenhower and uh, Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, Lady Bird Johnson and Patricia Nixon, Betty Ford and Rosalind Carter, Nancy Reagan and Barbara Bush, Hillary Rodham Clinton and Laura Bush. And I will show you Michelle Obama Esquire who taught us that when they go low, she goes high. Show me, Madam C.J. Walker, first black woman millionaire, and I will show you, first black woman billionaire, oh, Oprah Winfrey. Show me a medical researchers, and I will show you the young, gifted, and black Dr. Kismet Corbett, who was on the team that discovered the Moderna vaccine for COVID-19 in law. You show me Honorable Constance Baker Motley and I will show you Justice Sonia Sotomayor who reminded us that you must never take a woman's politeness for weakness. Generations have discovered connectors rather than dividers. So 
saying, Mark, listen to the wisdom of the elders. You only go around once and this is not a practice run. Aging is a process, it's not a program. Don't overthink it, live and let live. Listen to the witticisms and the wit and the wisdom of the elders, the mothers. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. Make your bed hard and that's where you're gonna lay. Lie down with dogs and you're gonna get up with fleas. It may look funny, but it's paid for. Just because you can do it, doesn't mean that you should do it. Know this, everybody does not deserve a front row seat in your life. When a man marries a woman, they become one. And the challenge begins then, when they try to decide which one. Be like a postage stamp, stick to something until you reach your destination. Tell the children that a C will not see them through, that they're going to have to go into class to find the meaning of the lesson and not lessen the meaning of the assignment. Know that the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, but the fertilizer smells the same. Have more than you show, speak less than you know. And if you can go out on Saturday night, you can get up and go to church on Sunday morning. You can turn a stumbling block into a stepping stone and an obstacle into an opportunity. You can turn a barrier into a benchmark. You can turn trash into treasure. You can turn a mess into a miracle. And even when you believe you've reached the end of your rope, I recommend Jesus because he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a light in the darkness and he can show you how to turn a, a knot and hold on. I dare you, I double dare you. You see, I live in Atlanta, Georgia and when I moved here 30 years ago, you know, it was interesting. They don't say, thank you very often for kindnesses, for job well done, they hard work. They don't often say thank you. Instead, they say appreciate you. So St. Mark Women's Committee, appreciate you. Christian women, appreciate you for your example that's worthy of emulation. Appreciate you for calling the name of the ancestors who took little and did much and literally stepped back so that you could step forward. Appreciate you for your early arrivals and late departures. Appreciate you for adopting a standard of excellence without excuse. Appreciate you for the honor and the history of family and the church family that understands we are better together. Appreciate you for knowing that those things that do not kill us make us stronger. Appreciate you for remembering that one on God's side is the majority. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Appreciate you for having a vertical connection. Because if you ever wonder what has happened, if you ever wonder how you lost your connection, you have to ask yourself, who moved? Who moved? Because as we leave this worship, know this, know that for us, you have to listen to the mothers. Mothers, you have to listen to the next generation because we are those Christian women 
who have to show some sign. Don't major in the minor. Stay woke. Be self-sufficient. Learn that age is a number. And you can be young enough to benefit from adventure. You can be wise enough to know that everybody does not deserve a front row seat in your life. You can celebrate diversity so that we can maximize the giftedness that God has given each one of us. Because at the end of life, what will matter, we are told by the writer. It's not what you bought, but what you built. It's not what you got, but what you gave. It's not the matter of your success. What will matter will be your significance. It's not the matter of what you learn, but what you taught. It won't matter whether you're beautiful or brilliant. What will matter is every act of integrity, compassion, sacrifice, and service. What will matter is not your competence, but your character. What will matter is not how many people you knew, but how many feel a lasting loss when you are gone. What will matter is how long you will be remembered and by whom and for what. Choose to live a life that matters. Because St. Mark, if you don't know my name, just know that the lyrics of the song speak for me. That I'm a Christian woman on life's journey. And as for me, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road was going to be easy, but I just don't believe. I just don't believe. I just don't believe he brought me this far to leave me woman to woman across generations, mind, body, and spirit. Christian women, you're the one that we've been waiting for. Christian women, I dare you, I dare you. Appreciate you. Christian women, show some signs. be the glory for the good things he continues to do to for us and to us. We come now to present the open door to discipleship, a door that was open over 2,000 years ago. There may be one who wishes to become a part of us. Our pastor would love to be your pastor. And so now we present to you the open door. Will you come in? As the choir sings, let us continue in our service, generation to generation, 
woman to woman as we present the open door to discipleship to give persons the freedom to come to Jesus just as you are as we hear the choir. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. We have received a great word through our sermon. We worship the Lord in spirit and in truth through our praise and worship. We've had a word. We received the word through the gospel as well as through our invitation. And now we can worship the Lord through our giving. As you all know, every uh, Women's Day as well as church anniversary and Men's Day, we ask for a $100, $100 assessment to help with the things and improvements around the church. And we are doing some marvelous things here. But we don't want to enter or have praise without bringing the Lord our offering and our tithe. And there are several ways to give. You can give online, you can give through Cash App, as well as there'll be someone available here from 1130 to 1230 to bring your offering. So we know what we do, St. Mark, regardless of whether we're in the building or not, we have our, our scripture that we stand on, and that's Zechariah chapter 8, verse 12. And even though you're in your homes, you know it by heart. So let's recite it together. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. And you all know that the Lord is faithful. So wherever you are, your tithe or your offering or your assessment, please lift it up to the Lord. And let's say our prayer. The seed in my hand has come forth from the fruit which grew on the tree or vine. Who came forth from the seed I planted in faith into your word the very first time. I'm giving it back to you. I'm believing in advance. It shall, it will produce a harvest that shall be, gotta be, can't help but be, exceedingly, abundantly, and above everything that I may ask and I may hope and I may think in Jesus' name. And I know if you're like me, you believe it. So reach up your hands and say, I receive it. I claim it. And I surely thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Well, presiding elder, my gosh, the culmination of a wonderful month of women working together generation to generation. It has been so powerful. It has been uplifting and it has been inclusive 
And we just thank the Lord for this day, this culminating day, and for everyone who has worked so hard you, the things you can see and the things you haven't seen. We are so grateful. We are. We are thankful to the Lord that he has brought us the whole month. Yes. And now we are Palm Sunday, our conclusion. Again, we want to thank every one of our sisters, Amen. all of our brothers. We want to thank our illustrious Pastor, God bless him. <laughs> Amen. To keep doing all that he has doing. Amen. And all that he is doing. Yes. We're Amen. grateful. Thank Amen. you, ladies. Thank you, brothers, for this day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all that you have given, all that you're giving, and all that you're about to give. Amen. And you know, presiding elder, we would not be complete without the hostess with the mostest who has convened our weekly uh, uh, Friday night services, Zooms, through Zoom. I'd like to call right now our hostess, Dr. Rose Susan Barty. Would you come up here, please? Oh, my goodness. If you didn't know it before, you know it now. She is so dynamic. And we just want to say thank you, my darling. Thank you. You are our darling. Thank you so very much. <laughs> and what a joy to have served. It has been one of the most rewarding parts in my life to be a part of this conversations across the generation. And what better place to do it here? So thank you very much and the opportunity to serve in this way. Amen. You've been extraordinary. And you know, we would be, we just have to let you know, let's get this together to okay. our presiding elder. Yes. She has led these women in such a powerful way with her passion, with her love. Presiding elder, we love you and we are so grateful for you. Thank you so much. And we want to say for all of you all, you know, it's, it's just not enough to say thank you. We heard you, we heard you during our Zooms, and there are some issues that, are, that need to be resolved. We want you to know we're working on an opportunity for this to continue. So please stay tuned. You're gonna hear the sequel to our workshops. Thank you. <laughs> And also, um, Dr. Trawick, yes, it is most befitting that we honor you as the chairperson of the Women's Conference 2021. And we want to do as the song says, give her her flowers while she yet lives. And so on behalf of the Women's Committee, we give you your flowers. <laughs> And we also give you a favorite thing that you would appreciate. So thank you for your leadership. Thank, thank you for your vision. What a joy it has been to serve along this lady, Dr. Ethel Wellington. Amen. Amen. And, and we know those of us who have been every Friday, we know that it's not just on Friday, but all the week yes. she's Zooming. <laughs> so we, we want to thank you so much for the work you have done. We know we can't pay you. God will do that. But we want you to know we love you. And I love you all. This has just been a joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on up here, sister. You're a part of this. And you know, we want to thank, you know, our, our praise team singers who have all month. We just, will you all stand? We need to give you a hand.
we want you to know how much we love you and appreciate all that you do, not just here, but in the community and worldwide. You are a blessing to us. You are a blessing to St. Mark, every one of us. And we are so grateful that you are our pastor. Yes. God bless you. I love you. I love you more. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And the people of God said, Amen. I want you to know we have been richly blessed and inspired as we've gathered together as God's called out set apart people during this time of our worship and praise. I know you've been blessed through the liturgy. I know you've been blessed by the word of God through our beloved and illustrious, gifted and anointed speaker today, Dr. Patricia Russell McLeod. And I'm just overwhelmingly blessed myself and I know the Lord has spoken to your heart. It is my sincere hope that you will continue to have these wonderful conversations. I'm excited about the work that's been done through our women's leadership excited that we've had a chance to talk from generation to generation and we had conversation even before this got started that we did not think it should be something that should end we found a way through COVID that we can remain connected and be in conversation and dialogue and use it as a platform to allow us to discuss pertinent issues for the life and health of all people and in particular in this case our women so we're excited about what is to come and thankful for all who have shared, uh, who have been re recognized on this particular occasion, and for those who find themselves on the background, on the back scenes, who also have played a part to make this a success. So for all of our women, our beloved presiding elder, our beloved Dr. Ethel, our beloved Dr. Barty, and all who have shared, Miss Peak, and that beloved, you know that beloved, Dr. Veronica Yates, Riley, all of y'all, and we thank and praise God for each one of you. It's now this opportunity for us to prepare to be dismissed, and please be mindful, this is Holy Week. And as we move through Holy Week, have in your mind Friday, we are planning to have at 12 noon the seven last sayings, and we look forward to you being a part of that at 12 noon. We look forward to you being a part of that. It's going to be an opportunity for us to present to you something that we did a couple of years ago, the editing and putting it together so it can be featured on Friday at 12 noon. And then don't forget, we look forward to sharing in the Word of God on first Sunday. We gather at this regular time, 9.30 as well as 10, via through these apparatus venues that allows us the platforms to get the Word out through Facebook Live as well as YouTube. And the 10 o'clock service will take place through Zoom. Then we gather together on the grounds of our church at 1 o'clock where we have an opportunity to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Whether you know it, I love you and I miss you and I thank God for you. Until we're blessed to come together again, come on, let's gather together. We're going to do it like we were in church on a Sunday morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's go home. say aloud as they said on the first 
Palm Sunday on the first Lamb Selection Day. Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He came that day as our Savior. But we will all have a chance to say Hosanna when he shows up as the judge to separate the sheep from the goat, to separate the right from the wrong. May that God we hold fast to both now, henceforth, and forever. Everybody, help me say amen. Amen. amen.
Oh, what a glorious task we are given to continually try to improve this great nation of ours. In St. Mark, ladies, we are improving this great nation through our church, one person at a time. I would be remiss if I didn't call off the names of our steering committee, Dolores Alexander, Natalie Bell, Latanya Janetta, Kim Hill, Cassie Peak, Charlene Smart, Cecilia Beckford, Harriet Brown Burke, Shaquilla Henderson, Carolyn Lemke, Gail Ridgway, and Cindy Washington. These women have done whatever you ask. They've gone extraordinarily beyond, above what you could ask, just making sure that this month was successful. Thank you, ladies. God bless you. I'd also like to acknowledge our technology team, Sharon Butler, Shaquilla Henderson, Ashley James, Cheryl Keeley, Sheena Washington. Our church administrative support, Sharon Butler, Shirley Smart, and Reverend Beeson, who provided our Zoom for us, and our music ministry, Reverend Priscilla Robinson, our praise team, and our graphic designer, Debbie Johnson. Presiding Elder Robinson, thank you for your leadership. Dr. Barty, thank you for your amazing ability to host and to transition between all these generations. And finally, thank you, Pastor Gray, for your belief and your support and your love for the women of St. Mark. Ladies, we are unified. We must remain unified. You can't do anything by yourself, but together we can move mountains. And we've seen what could happen during this month. In spite of a pandemic, we came together as almost no one could do, as no one could expect to do. And we just bless God today for his grace and his mercy and his anointing. God bless you. God keep you. Welcome back. It's my sincere hope that you've been blessed and inspired and encouraged by our worship today. I know that you've been encouraged. I myself have been blessed by not only the worship, the liturgy, as well as the word that I am ready for an outstanding week going forth. Don't forget that as we move through Holy Week, we want to encourage you that although we're not going to find ourselves gathering and we're still scattered, we're working diligently to make sure that on Good Friday, you're going to be blessed to have all what we call a rerun or a repeat or reminder. We're going to have our chance to bring back what we did a couple of years ago for our seven last sayings. It will premiere at 12 noon on Friday. And also, don't forget that we're going to look forward to Resurrection Sunday morning. It's going to be outstanding. I look forward to you sharing with us in the Word of God. And don't forget, at 1 o'clock, we will gather on the grounds of St. Mark for our time to worship together in our own special way. And lastly, but not least, don't forget that we encourage each one of you to sow your seeds of faith. Don't forget that we are a church, our tithing church, as well as we have made a commitment during the month of March to sow a gift of no less than $100 in support of our capital campaign and also support of our women's conference. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. So until we're blessed to share with you once again in word, in worship, and in witness, remember I love you. I miss you more than words can say. And God bless you.